except for my class, but I made four of them. I figured if, I, if I'm going to make one, how hard is it to make three more? And I might use it on another, another table. Now, a lot of my stuff, the leg seamlessly kind of goes into the top or the, the base. So, in order to do that, you need this part kind of in between that. Right? So, it's there. I don't know if you see it. And it comes into there. So, so it's like a French fleet almost. Almost, yeah. How do you connect those two? So, I, you can use a domino. However, I also thought that some of you guys may not have a domino. How many people have a domino? All right, they're great. <laughs> Obviously, you 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 have uh, awakened. <laughs> That's the big one. Or the big one? I have the big one, but so I need to screw that. All right, so I want to show you, all right, we'll hit another slide here. So that's basically what I was doing before. You see on the bottom, there's a template that you route. So I routed that template. I put my, my other thing, I cut that, just like I showed you guys, right? So we could maybe put that. Uh, anyway, it's okay. Leave it there for now. Sure. All right. So, but I wanted to lay this on its back. Yeah. So, do you obviously you see this mechanism here, mm. right? You see that this is kind of locked in, and you see that. Big dowel there. All right. So let's put it down a bit. <clears throat> so we have basically the same thing. I mock this up for you guys. Dell. We're going to for for the people who don't have the domino. And I should, I should say why we have that. Because if you drill into end grain and put a screw in end grain, it doesn't have much power. It's not the best. You'd have to go in a pretty long screw. Right? But if you put that screw through, through that side grain of the dowel, it really locks it in. If you had something like a workbench or something, you really had a lot of need a lot of strength. You could put a steel pin in there and and drill and tap it. Yeah, it's almost like the uh, bed frames where they have the bolt that goes in and you. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So this has two gals, so it doesn't twist, right? And and the screws. What's that? You want mortise it, mortise them. Well, I, I like mortising, but I have the domino. <laughs> 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 I've done a lot of mortising. So, domino class. <laughs> Well, actually, you know, I, I like the domino. I, and I'm not a tool. I'm not a tools. But uh, a couple of my friends who have really high end professional shops and they can hire. Well, Frank Klaus is one, right? Uh, Frank Klaus and I, uh, I've known him for a long time. He's done a lot of fishing for me. We, we just are friends, and I, in and out of that. And I, and I said to uh, Doug, I like that domino. And he just like could not, like he was raving. Check this out, check this out, check that out, check that out. My friend Kelly of uh, Call Me, Me Wait, 
they had, and, and think of it this way, he has, like, Foley Way has about 18 employees, right, a couple of finishers. He could take a person with very little skill, teach them how to line up dominoes, and they, they can be productive that day. Boom. An hour later, they're productive. Right? Uh, it's actually a good tool. Yeah. So this is the process shop. Do you see your pieces here? All right. That's me kind of carving it. And that's, that's finished, but it's not actually installed. All right. So this is another table, very similar. What's the... That's actually plastic tubing, hard plastic tubing. So what I did was, because the top is thin, I drilled it and glued it, but I put a screw into it, okay? And the bottom is thick, so I drilled that hole quite a bit deeper. All right, so... <coughs> This is, this is a table, quite honestly, I really like this table. I had it in a show, and uh, the show got reviewed, and the um, person reviewing it really had a lot to say about this, called it ghost-like, and said the design was terrific. I said to my wife, I said, you know, she really understood, all right, the design concept of this. This concept is all about the form. It's all about the form. You're gonna you're gonna like it or not like it, but if you like it, you may not know exactly why you like it. But when you really come down to it, it's the way this curve comes into that curve and goes down to that curve. It's the negative space here. It's it's the shape, the repeating curves of the top. It's pretty much no grain. I picked the plainest, whitest maple I could find, and then I and then I bleached it. Um, and this section here, I, I mocked it up, <coughs> and I'm going to introduce something that I I do quite a bit. I'm going to need it. <laughs> it should work. I have a woodwork in some of the baseball players. Alright. <clears throat> a lot of times I will take pieces, and I think I have another way to do it. You actually can't find it. Yeah, it may be a lot. Anyway, a lot of times if I have nice pieces, I will cut down the center on both sides and store my pieces, right? And it will dry out uniformly. It's exactly what they do for violin backs. You can buy fiddle backs 10 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old. They come this way, they open it up, and they, and they book match. Right? But I drop the stupid thing to book match this way. Right? So, and it'll, it'll book match. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I understand. So you're basically running in a curve on a table saw, yeah. top and bottom, and leaving a little yeah. sliver yeah, right. in between. Yeah. Right. And you don't find that it closes or opens on one well, side? Well, that, that doesn't bother me, but if I cut it all the way through, I can lose this piece and not have to find it. <laughs> what? Piece <laughs> matches that grain? Where did I put that? So I, so I don't do that. So, <laughs> But do you find it actually dries more uniformly? Yeah. yeah. Well, as opposed to... Ripping it all the way and then stickering it. Well, that, it. that would dry pretty well too, but then I'd still lose the parts. And I don't do it to everything. I do it a, when I see nice, really nice grain. I did it to this to show, to show you guys. And on Sunday I had a presentation. Sunday presentation was a little different than your presentation, but because I've been here before, I'm trying to show you some other newer stuff of what I, what I've been doing. But I do, I have in my loft lots of, of pieces with beautiful grain or curved grain because I use that with my work. If, if I'm going to sweep this line, 
I want grain a lot of times to sweep that way. Right? So, for instance, remember that, that table that I called style early on? It, um, anyway, that was a commission piece. And uh, it's on the cover of a book and it's been in museums and stuff like that. But one thing I do a lot of and using that same technique, is I will book match this side to that side. <clears throat> now there's a couple of reasons why this is actually three layers. Three layers, right? The reason, if I had a big wide board and I pencil that out, it could snap, right? But if I have the center piece coming this way, and another piece <coughs> butting up to that with a, with, a, with, a, with a cut angle. But then I have another piece going over that section like, like a brick wall, right? Then it will lock in. So I do that a lot, especially if some things are delicate and it's got a big curve. Now some people will say, why don't you laminate and bend it? A lot of times when you when then you carve in, you see a lot of lamination, kind of takes your eye off of it. <clears throat> but I do bend quite a bit. So hey, guys, it, it's not three layers on the cross. It's basically a double bridle joint. <coughs> no, it's, no, it's, it's three, three layers, layers all the way through, and the center layers kind of go this way, this way, and this way, and then this covers all of those joints and locks it in. So you don't worry over over time that the difference in grain movement... No, well, you're square. using the same materials. I'm always using the same materials. In fact, a lot of times from the same board. Right? And it's so <coughs> there's not much width on these pieces. So, you know, like most of, most of your movement is through the width. It's not going to go much if it's only a few inches. Um, but that's actually a really excellent point because so many people either ignore seasonal movement or don't really take care of it or don't understand it. Um, and, that, and that's a shame because then pieces start to break apart. All right, what do we do? So th this is kind of, oh, I didn't tell you the most important thing. How do I make this? How do I make the, how do I make the leg? Do I have a, a suggestion? I think it's two pieces. <laughs> Each leg. Well, you're right, and, and but you haven't hit on it yet. Take, take a piece, cut it down the middle, and then I can bandsaw that, right? Mm -hmm. Now I have that. Do another one like that, right? Now glue the two together with brown paper in between it. Mm -hmm. And now turn it on my lathe. Go, go back. No, I guess go forward. I'm sorry. You see where I'm splitting it apart? Wow. And you see where the lathe part comes? Was there any point where you, where you saw that form coming off the lathe and said, well, I should do another one but leave it as a whole? round leg as opposed to splitting it with brown paper next time? No, I haven't done that, but uh, I like the, I, I've done this technique on a couple other tables. And the first one, I, I drew the sketch and then I said, how am I going to do it? And this, this, I like the sketch, and then I figured, wow, I can turn it on a lathe and split turning. And then I said, well, I, I want negative space through here, I want to see through there. And uh, so I figured, well, I'll cut that first bandsaw, clean it up, glue it, put another one on, turn it on the lathe, separate it, and put it on. And the joint on this one, you notice how I have these like this, right? What I wanted to do, and what I had this, all of these are that way, right? And there's a separate piece on either side of that. That's kind of like that. Kind of like that. Now that really locks that joint in, right? And it allowed me to, to bandsaw that 
it allowed, uh, gives me a lot, a lot of extra strength. And, uh, and I think it came out pretty good. I like that. So, I guess a question, yeah. obviously when you turn it on the lathe, um, you have to cut a flat there and put another piece and then hand shape it. But the top was turned to no. where you're going to the... Uh, no, it's just like... Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, just but that's like, the outside. Look, You're right, but the inside probably had, you know, it was fun on the lake. No, I mean, not the outside of the turning is inside of the lake. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the I'm outside not. of the turning is here. Right. Yes, right. that's what I'm saying. So, you know, you got a radius on the inside here. Right? You do that yeah, after. And then, so, you know, so there was another piece here. There were two legs. Yeah, two legs. Yeah, yeah, two, legs yeah, yeah, yeah. two turns. After you prime them apart, it goes back and shake. Yeah, it's just uh, you know, you've got a round on the surface. You have to watch that up to. Yeah. So if you go through, you'll see. Two like splitting a column. That's it right there, Mark. Okay. I'm going to cut that flat right there. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. You that, can do that a few different ways. This way works out well. Yeah, that was what I was curious about. Um, and then, um, go, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, go. Now, <clears throat> gluing it, it's, it's easy to glue it crooked, <laughs> which is what I was worried about. So I have it on, a, on MDF, and I have that clamped down. And then, obviously, I have a framing square. So I'm lining up dead center so that when I glue it and put the table, I don't have a leg that's bent. And is this, are the two center pieces half lap? The crossing yeah, lap? well actually even more so. It's cross lap, and then I crossed over with another piece on each. The, the cross. I always feel that if I can make it stronger and more durable, I'm going to make it stronger and more durable. And I've been doing custom furniture for close to 40 years, and I've never had a I'm going to I've never had a callback except once. So it wasn't me, and it was also how I met Frank Klaus. Uh, I did a, a the biggest piece I've ever done at the time, big armoire. Bent doors and Mozambique, and this took me forever. Uh, five maple drawers, all hand dovetailed. It's on my website, at least a picture of it in cabinets. And I called up Constantine's, and I said I want to talk to the tech guy. He came on. I said, "You're selling um, veneer glue. It sounds a lot like contact cement." But it could, it would be really nice. So I told him what I had. I had 30, 30 inch doors, 22 inch wide, curved. I have uh, maple veneer. Oh, perfect. That's exactly what you want to do it for. So I delivered the piece. It was just really nice, right? Three months later, I get a call. It's starting to bubble. Oh. <laughs> So this is that, that couple that I did 20 pieces for over the years. So they didn't get really worried. But when I walked in there, I, I almost had a heart attack, and I had to try to disguise it. Well, that still looks so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I called up Constantine's, and they were at a show. So I, I brought the doors to them, and this guy acts like a real jerk. And he said, well, you... you, you you probably just put one coat of glue, right? No, I flashed two coats, like it says. And you probably put it on full strength, right? No, I thinned it 20%, like it says. <laughs> and then I, I threatened to sue him. A friend of mine said, there's a, there's a, and he's a federal prosecutor, a really good friend of mine. He says, it's, it's obvious. Oh, I called the glue people who made it, right? And they came to my shop, and they said, we make really good contact cement. If Constantine's wants to say it's, it's veneer glue, so they settled out of court and sent me to Frank Klaus. So I had stripped all the doors, and the, the hard part of that job was the outside of these doors had Mozambique shaped and carved hinges inlet to match the outside. 
So to get it in a, in a vacuum press and get this re-veneer, I have to take that off somehow, put it back on, make up for the saw curve, have it go back on the cabinet so that all the hinges match, and open and close really nicely. It's scary. So, we did it, but it was how I... <clears throat> I, I'll tell you a story, but it, but it, it does, it's obviously I'm patting myself on the back, right? Uh, really hard, so this, this kind of hurts. But <laughs> can, can we Frank, and I, Frank and I are working on my doors, it's a Monday, and he had gone in, he, he starts telling me, I was into uh, this show, it was at the uh, uh, Gallery of Applied Arts, a brand new opening, million dollar gallery. Sam Loof was there, Wendell Castle, Wendy Nakashima, uh, you know, Nakashima was there. You name it, they were there in that, right? And he said, there was this desk, it was beautiful, it was this, it was that, it was this, it was that. I said, was it about this high? Yeah, it was about this wide. I said, yeah. You know it? I said, yeah, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I did. And I made it for Foley Waite, who had the contract, and they hired me to make that piece. We made two other pieces that were in that show. But the, the little bit of hardware we had was sent out to be gold-plated. It was like taking a final exam every day. I even remember drilling the escutcheon for around the key that was gold-plated. I had to get a 2764 bit. We took it, I polished it, and I had to drill it right in the right spot without chipping anything. And I was scared to death. <laughs> so anyway, that uh, and, and it sold to the Johnson and Johnson, and Foley weight was and they took waters for it because I made jigs and pictures for it. All right, let's go. Glenn, let's um before you go on, let's just take a ten minute all right, break, right? right.